Welcome to an example on how to determine the generating function for a recursively defined sequence. We are given a sub n equals four times a sub n minus one, minus three times a sub n minus two, with a sub zero equals two, and a sub one equals three. We're asked to find the first several terms of the sequence, then determine the generating function for the sequence. To begin, if we are given a sub n equals four times a sub n minus one, minus three times a sub n minus two, and we set the right side of the equation equal to zero, then we have a sub n minus four times a sub n minus one, plus three times a sub n minus two equals zero. This will be true for all but the first two terms because there are two initial conditions. To solve the recurrence relation, we want to take every term of the given sequence after a sub one and subtract four times the previous term and then add three times the term before that. This will give us a sequence of zeros which will allow us to determine the generating function. Before we set this up, let's find the first several terms of the given sequence. We are given a sub zero equals two and a sub one equals three. Using the recurrence relation, a sub two is equal to four times a sub one minus three times a sub zero, which is four times three minus three times two, which equals six. a sub three is equal to four times a sub two minus three times a sub one, which is four times six minus three, minus times, three six, times which, three, is, which is 15. A sub four is equal to four times a sub three minus three times a R sub two, which is four times 15. We now know the first several terms of the given sequence, two, three, six, 15, 42, and so on. And now let's determine the generating function. The key to setting this up is using the equation a sub n minus four times a sub n minus one plus three times a sub n minus two equals zero. For the first step, we let a equal the generating series for the given sequence, where we have a equals two plus three x plus six x squared plus 15 x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. And now because of the minus four times a sub n minus one, we multiply a by negative four x. Notice when we do this, it shifts the terms one position to the right and multiplies them by negative four. Notice the first product is negative four x times two, which is negative eight x. This indicates the constant term in the series would be zero. And then because of the plus three times a sub n minus two, for the third equation, we multiply a by three x squared. This shifts the terms right two positions and multiplies them by three. The first product is three x squared times two, which is six x squared. The constant term and the x term are both zero in this series. And now we add the three equations together. On the left, we have a minus four x a plus three x squared a equals, on the right, we have two and then minus five x plus a series of zeros. When we add the terms of the three series, we are subtracting four times the previous term and then adding three times the term before that to the terms of the original sequence after a sub one, which results in a sequence of zeros, which we see after two minus five x on the right. To finish, we solve for a, which will give us a generating function. We can factor a from the left side of the equation. Simplifying the right, we just have two minus five x. The last step to solve for a is to divide by one minus four x plus three x squared, which gives us a generating function, the quantity two minus five x divided by the quantity one minus four x plus three x squared. I hope you found this helpful.